My name is Sadie, I'm in sixth grade, and I'm from Middletown. I'm Olivia, I'm from Windsor, and I'm a senior. Um, I'm Jaden, I'm from South Windsor, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm David, I'm from Manchester, and I'm in ninth grade. Uh, my name's Ethan, and I'm from West Hartford, and I'm a sophomore here. Okay, great. Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of how you got to Watkinson and 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 why? Like, what, 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 why you chose the school? Maybe that's a helpful thing. Maybe you can know, kick it off. I guess. Um, so I was new to Watkinson last year as a freshman, and I moved uh, go last year from Minnesota. Uh, so going from eighth grade to ninth grade, I moved, and my dad found the school, and he just loved the programs that were offered here and loved how accepting the school was, and so I came here and I love it. Um, I actually came to Watkinson because my middle school, we had a high school fair, and I saw what it offered because we had some pamphlets, and it was very intriguing, so I came and I visited, and I really loved the community that Watkinson had um, spent so much time growing, and I kind of just went off the school. Uh, I don't exactly remember how I found it, but I like like I liked all the like community and how like it was smaller and like more personal than other schools. Oh, I don't have a great answer as then. Um, people always make fun of me for this story, but I came to Washington um, via the Cheddar Broccoli Soup. Um, <laughs> I did an organic cooking program over the summer during my seventh grade year and I fell in love with the campus and the food and <laughs> the travel abroad programs. Um, we were kind of just looking at many different schools for many just to go and get it for my school district just because we wanted to try something new and we were looking at a couple of the magnet schools in Hartford and then this school and what I was really looking for was um, smaller classes and an easier and like easier uh, way to uh, learn and like more projects and I kind of found it here. Okay. Good. I'll open it up to folks uh, if you have questions for our students. So I know it starts in sixth grade, so what's it like coming in as a freshman when people already know each other? Well, when coming in as a freshman, it's a little bit challenging since there's um, some friends who are already close with each other, but if you are very friendly and you kind of, you have to socialize with them because you can't really make friends just standing there, but if you um, show your kindness, they'll, they'll really welcome you. Uh, yeah, um, so, like, you kind of just have to, like, talk to people, um, there are people who are already friends, but you can kind of, like, they have the, uh, for, like, back to school day, so you can talk to people then. Um, um, um uh, I have a bit of a different experience, so I came in last year, and I was really shy, and I really didn't talk to anybody from the first week of school, but, um, we have a retreat, either in, like, the second week of school or on, like, the third week of school, uh, and you're, you... Uh, go either like out of state or to a place uh, that's fairly local with your entire grade. And the ninth day retreat is um, you go to a farm and you get put into um, different like countries and there are different uh, buildings where you spend a night with kids you have just met or kids that have known each other for the last since sixth grade. And uh, it kind of it pushes it like pushes you encouragingly to talk with other kids and to make really good connections. Is that for every grade level they do? Uh, yeah, grades? so freshman, uh, you go to a, a fa uh, the Heifer Farm. Uh, sophomore this year, we went to Boston. Uh, juniors, they go to um, two colleges. Yeah. And then seniors, they went Whitewater Rapping this year. Yeah, up, upstate New York, so yeah. And then the middle school, where did you go? Um, I went to Camp Hazen. Yeah, The seventh grade went to Camp Hazen as well, and the eighth graders went to Washington, D.C. Right. So we've been doing that, just to jump in, we've been doing that for uh, 30 years at least. And we do find that it really helps sort of break down 
you know, any barriers and get kids to really connect to one another. If you if you're going up to Camp, camp uh, it's in Rutland, uh, Massachusetts, the Heifer International uh, Camp, and the kids call it um, affectionately called Starvation Camp because um, they have to cook their own meal in the country that they are representing. So, Ethan, what country were you in? Uh, I was in Kenya, okay. and uh, we made this rice tomato thing. It really didn't look like food once we had made it. <laughs> did, you eat, did you eat much of it? Uh, yeah, I ate it. It was surprisingly good. Okay, there you go. That's good. Well, you must have had a decent cook. I, I remember being in that in one of the groups, and that the adults can't get involved in the cooking or the making of the fire. So sometimes you can imagine they're getting. I think I was in. Uh, Mongolia, and the kids were in a yurt, and they had to cook um, with some yak milk, and they actually had yaks, and barley, and like uh, an onion, and a couple of those purple potatoes. That was dinner. That was dinner. And then I think one of the kids was in charge of cooking the, the beginning, and burned the barley and the yak milk. So like it was just like, so. They, but it's. I mean, the idea is that there's a curriculum up there, and they're studying. Uh, you know, world resources and uh, different countries and sustainability, and so yeah. Good question. So does this does the entire school go on these retreats at the same time? The upper school is all off on their retreats at the same time, so that the teachers and the teachers go along with them. Right. So that and then the middle school is uh, I think a week later, um, and and they go. And so, how long are they? Uh, usually a night, an overnight, so two days and an overnight, right? I have a question. Um, one of the things about Walkinson that you know we're hearing is how uh, it really cultivates what your passion is, and it'd be nice to hear what each of your passions is, or if you don't have anything in your mind right now at your age, um, how you see Walkinson bringing that out. Um, well, I like I do ballet, and so I do it over at the University of Hartford, so it's really close. So, um, but. Also, I like to sing, and there's a really awesome music program. And then you kind of you do so many different projects in like math and art and whatever classes you have that you kind of find what you're passionate about just by doing school. Sorry about this, but um, I've got a lot of interests, but one of my main ones is like service work. Um, and kind of volunteer work, so I've used Walkinson as kind of a springboard for all of my ideas. Like, I don't know if you, you were all at all school, Native American Heritage Month is like my big event of the year. Um, so that's something I've organized for the last two years. Um, I've also done, I've, I'm one of the leaders of our feminism group, or Young Women's Empowerment. Uh, I'm also part of like a, a women student of color group. I worked with like I've uh, I'm a London I was a London traveler one of the last travelers on that trip. I've been through so many drives and like events here on campus. I'm a global studies diplo uh, diploma student, um, so I'll graduate with two diplomas this year. Um, I'm I have so much more stuff like coming that I'm sorry, Ms. Schrader, you'll probably be part of, but um, <laughs> I've used it. I've used this place as a platform for what I want to do in the future, and it's really been a good place to kind of get that started. Thank you. Um, so, um, I mean, my passion is like film. So like they don't have a direct class for it, but like they have the afternoon activities and they have like a film activity. So like if they don't have a direct class, they usually try and incorporate something somewhere. Thank you. Um, right now, like, as a freshman, I'm passionate about law. I want to be a lawyer when I grow up. So um, in English class right now, we're working on making strong essays. And to get into law school and through many other colleges, you have to have very strong essays and we're working on our thesis statements. So I believe that that has played into my you know, passion because when writing my essays to go into college, I think that colleges might choose people who have stronger essays than people who are still learning and writing build, and building to get into better skills. Um, so <coughs> last year I was really passionate about acting and so for in the fall I did my first play here and at any other school I probably wouldn't have done that just because 
Um, the community here is so accepting, and they make you feel comfortable in your own skin. And um, continuing on this year, I'm taking, um, it's a course that's offered every other year. It's um, called Advanced Theater and Film. And uh, so we have a uh, class called Intro to Acting, and once you take that, um, the year after you can take um, Advanced Theater and Film. And we spend one half of the year uh, working on filmmaking. So right now we are working on uh, filming and editing our own music video. So we um, went on campus uh, with a group of three people, uh, filmed shots for it, and then we, uh, using Final Cut Pro, we were editing uh, music over it. And uh, it's really, really fun to experience filmmaking this way. And then for the second half, we will be doing acting. And um, Watkinson has that and just so many other programs. We have a fantastic music program. Uh, we have an ensemble. Uh, we have a string ensemble. We also have a chorus for singers. Yeah. Thank you. Yes? Can any of you speak uh, or talk about the creative arts program here? I don't know if that's what you're taking. But. Um, so we, um, one really, really big thing we have here at Watkinson is called the CAP Diploma. Um, so it's Creative Arts Diploma. And uh, my brother, who's a senior, is currently doing that for music. And you can do it for creative writing, um, visual arts, uh, music, uh, acting. And it is, you, can, you can start it as early as freshman year if you're extremely passionate about creative arts. Um, but normally, you'll start it as a junior and continue on your senior year. And uh, so you will have to. Um, finish uh, a required amount of time within your field of creative arts that you're studying for it. And then um, some of the global studies program that Olivia was talking about, you'll get a second diploma once you graduate. So I don't know if anybody else is anything to add. Olivia, you know a lot about too. Uh, I actually wanted to be a triple diploma graduate, um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do because I had so many interests within the creative arts program. But Ms. Volpe, who's the director, has been extremely um, welcoming to me, even though I'm in Global Studies. I've been able to take creative writing, and now I'm doing an independent study with one of the English teachers for creative writing. I'm, I'm taking advanced studio for painting and um, multimedia work. I've also stage managed musicals, and it's kind of been, even if you aren't that diploma student, you can still participate. And so the course that you have to take for that class is the Creative Arts Diploma, like seminar. Yeah. yeah, and it's you spend a year studying the essential question of like what is art, and you figure out like what art is, pretty much. Yes, I have one other question. Um, the feeling I get when I see a lot of the students, and uh, even with the uh, meeting that was held this morning, is. Um, a lot of students seem very creative and interested in arts, music. Is there a, a core group of children, or, let's say young adults, that are um, interested in a lot of other things? I mean, I know architecture, but is it, I, I'm almost getting some feeling there's a lot of creativity and a lot of focus on the arts and theater. Is that the case, or is it fairly, you know, and is there a lot of people that are not into the arts, Talking to and being friends with people that are, you know, the total community. Um, there definitely are a lot of people who are not like more creative minded and want to focus on like more math and sciences. And we have a fantastic science department. Um, we offer chemistry. Last year we offered zoology, and this year we're offering um, forensics. Physics. Yeah, forensics. forensics and also physics. Um, also, with um, the fantastic faculty here and uh, UHART being almost across the street, uh, with math, uh, if you um, like exceed the math that we offer here on campus, you can take UHART classes um, for higher levels of mathematics. Um, so right now I'm taking pre-calc, and most likely on my senior year, I'll be taking a um, UHART class for math. We're talking about like we. There's an element of this conversation. We this whole conversation is skewing a little artsy, which is fine. That's a very vibrant aspect of the school. But I think something that um, is worth saying is that 
oftentimes at Watkinson, the same students that you're going to see in a play or in a music concert are the same kids that you're going to see playing soccer or playing basketball. And that the design of that building that we are all in together this morning was quite intentional. It was to really make a statement that embodies the ethos of the school, which is to say, we don't actually believe that at 12 or 14 or 16 or 17, kids have to decide what they're going to be when they grow up. And that part of a really, um, I don't know, life fully lived as an adolescent is sampling things and trying things. And so oftentimes, um, kids at this school will say, I always wanted to be in a play, but I wasn't a theater kid. So I, I would never have gotten in because identities and groups form right around who's going to be the theater kid, who's going to be the soccer kid. And we're small enough, and I think what we believe is that you want to be a, a theater kid, then be in a play. You, you've never played soccer before? try soccer and so there's a way in which our kids say I always wanted to do that and I always knew I had it in me or I never in a million years thought I would ever be in a play but I all of a sudden am in a play so there's this that symbol of that building of saying we don't want kids to walk a half a mile down to the field house because they're the athletes and then have to walk a mile back because they're the musicians it, it actually is geography, but it's also, I think, a metaphor for the beliefs that are sort of in the mix of the school, if that makes sense. Hi, Jan. Hi. Um, so along the same lines, then, can you talk a little bit, one of you said something about you chose the school because of the travel abroad program, and you're in the global studies. So could you talk a little bit about that program? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. We talk about global studies all day. <laughs> um, so... I had, when I actually applied for Washington, I wanted to go, one of the main reasons I applied was the study abroad program. I had a very big interest in the Cambodia trip, which isn't running right now, but there's a bunch of other trips that are possible. Um, I, in my 11th grade year, I want to say, traveled to London with 10 other students, and we studied at Royal Holloway University, and we did uh, lectures at Oxford. And we kind of just traveled around the city of London and adjacent city of Egham. And we lived there for a week and a half, I believe. Uh, I'd say that was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. It was a very chaotic trip. But what I got out of it was kind of the security of the idea that I wanted to um, work abroad and study abroad and live abroad. So I will be applying, I am applying to universities in England, but it's more of the fact that the study abroad programs that we have here are very diverse because you can go, there's a trip going to the DR and they're doing service work, or you can go to Uganda and teach kids English and see rhinos, but you can also go to London and study at Oxford. So there's a wide variety of what you can do, and you can propose a trip. I know two students who are trying to get a trip to the Middle East, and it's if you don't see it here, you can find it or you can work some way to do it into your life. And there, there, there isn't just international travel, there is also travel within, you know, we go all over the state, all over the country for sports events and global studies events and CAP events. We go pretty much everywhere that we can get our physical hands on. Yes? Um, do you have foreign language here? And if so, what um, we have Spanish, ASL, um, English um, language for international students, and French. Am I yeah. 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 And just recently, I mean, we have a few students here who um, are taking like online courses um, versus students studying Arabic through Johns Hopkins, and um, we will certainly entertain proposals like that. Um, as long as it's a, uh, a strong curriculum that we can, you know, check off and, and, and uh, pass. Uh, and that certainly is, you know, so he's doing his passion there and uh, it will go on his college, you know, transcript, high school transcript. Yes? Um, I'm just wondering as an incoming ninth grader, how, um, you know, sort of balance, how you choose the um, electives, if you like, what the day looks like in terms of the 
core academic subjects and then the electives. How sure. does that show sure. up? Yeah, does someone want to talk a little bit about their, their day? Or, yeah. Well, when we first get here, you go to your first class, which I believe is A block. Um, we go through a weekly schedule, so there's week one and week two, but for A block, first you go to your first switch and then we meet in all school or we have something called advisory where we're kind of mixed with other grades like ninth through 12th and we get to sit down and discuss whatever we have to talk about and if we're ever planning something like recently we've done some challenges like bake-offs between other advisories which is a little fun activities to do and then you go to your second switch which is it could be English or math any of the four subjects and others that we offer and then we meet up for lunch if you're in ninth grade and you get to time to socialize with your friends and you get to, even if you want to, head to the AOC and study some more. And then after that, we go to our last class of the day. No, our second, two last classes of the day. And then after the first one, then we go to the second one and then it's our, it's our activity time, which right now I'm doing tennis, which is a very fun elective. And you can, we, it ranges from soccer to theater to many others. And then you can go home or you can stay on and study a little, stay on campus and study a little more if you want to. So in terms of, can I, can I, oh, yeah, so in terms of the ninth grade curriculum, that was a very nice outline of the day. Thank you, David. Um, we have our four, four, four core courses. Everybody takes the same English class. Everybody takes the same um, modern world history class, um, environmental science. And then depending on where you, you should be placed, you take uh, your math class, often it's Algebra 1 or Geometry for ninth graders, and then uh, you take your language, you'll also be placed into whatever seems to be the most appropriate language. We also um, require our ninth graders to take a course called Ninth Grade Seminar, which is three different trimesters of different classes. The first is a digital citizenship class. The second is a personal essay class designed to begin the process of students be to learning to look at themselves and reflect on themselves um, in writing, ultimately to prepare them for writing their college essays. And then the third course is something called Projects. It's not a fancy name, but basically what it means is uh, a course designed to put in place all the skills that the kids will need to do project work uh, going forward into the upper school curriculum because we do do a lot of projects here but they're pretty rigorous and so organizational skills, backward planning, uh, you know, how to uh, basic visual design uh, skills, oral presentation skills, etc. So that's six classes and then sometimes uh, about half the students also take an elective class which would be um, usually for ninth graders in the arts. Uh, but uh, also ninth, there's on rare occasions some ninth and tenth graders can also double up in history and take an extra history class. Um, before we leave, we'll we'll, we'll have our um, we have some booklets that describe from sixth grade all the way through twelfth our curriculum, and we're all happy to, to share those and, and get you some of those before you leave because there are several people ask me about the same similar questions. Yeah, thanks. Yes. You go ahead. Um, just before you start here at Watkinson, if you can go back, what is it that you wish you knew then that you know now? About Watkinson or just like? Well, just, just starting in here in general. In general, just starting your journey here at Watkinson. Uh. Um, I kind of like, like Watkinson, like the learning wise, or just in general? Just in general. Anything that would have been helpful to yourself before you started? Like, if I knew this, I could have skipped some steps or, or... Well, I talk a lot. <laughs> and, so, and so, I used to, like, I still talk a lot, but I, like, I didn't know kind of how to reduce my questions or, like, what I had, what I wanted to say um, into something that could make it so everyone can have a discussion. Um, but, like, here, I can, I... I'm learning how to talk for us, I guess, and have more like shorter questions. So. <laughs> um, I really don't know how to put it, but almost uh, like don't be like not don't be satisfied, but like if you're striving for a goal, don't satisfy with less than that goal. Um, like if you're really passionate about doing a certain 
activity after school. Uh, we have opportunities where if it's not offered here, you can um, arrange it to um, do uh, an activity outside of school after school. And if there's like something that you're really passionate about doing it, don't be afraid to reach out because um, everybody, almost everybody at the school will be like, yeah, I'd love to help you with what you're passionate about. So just don't be afraid to ask questions and reach out. Go ahead, yeah. um, I'm sure it changes grade to grade, but um, what about the workload for homework? You're, you're a new sixth grader here, correct? Um, I was, that was something that I was kind of looking into when I came here. Um, it's not, it's, you have, you kind of have to work. It's not like, you don't have a lot of homework in sixth grade. You have uh, just enough and you, have, you can't not work on it. Like, if you have, it, it, since it goes on like a day one, day two schedule, you have, for example, this week we had a day two, which had four classes, um, Monday, and then Tuesday, you know, <laughs> well, I think it was day one on. They alternate. They yes. alternate days. So you have two days to complete your homework. And so um, it kind of balances out the homework. Uh, total other spectrum of the school, but 12th grade, it kind of depends on what you take, because I'm not taking university prep class, but I know people who have, like, day ones, they'll have one class, and then, like, those three free blocks are either used for college or work or nothing, and it kind of depends on what you'd like to take. Like, I did a full course load this year, I'm taking six out of eight classes. Um, and I have a bunch of stuff outside of school, so it all really depends on what you put on yourself. But it also depends on every teacher. It depends on you know what they like to give, what they think is appropriate. But they all understand like they have other classes and other things that they need to be doing, not just my class. Um, so for ninth grade, you don't like they give you a lot of time in class too, depending on what it is, like if it's a project like in environmental science right now, we're working on like learning about a biome, um, so like it's like a desert or a forest. Um, so like they give you time in class to look up your information and work on it. So um, depending on the project, you can sometimes, um, like also if you have study halls too, you could get it done before you even get home too, so you might not. In my opinion, I would say that the workload is just enough because right now I'm in math. Well, I did math class recently, and mainly our homework is based on building our core skills. So um, my teacher, Ms. Morales, she usually gives us homework that she really thinks that will help strengthen our skills. Like we were, we were working on solving, sorry, solving y and x problems. So she, it's not so much that they're trying to suffocate you with work, it's more that they want to build your skills and they want you to go, they want you to be at a point where you won't even need it anymore. You won't even need homework. Well, not so much that, but you won't even need that so much <laughs> practice. So I would say that it's right, it's just, it's enough. It's all you really honestly need. Um. Compared to going to a public middle school where we had seven classes a day, the workload here is extremely manageable. Um, I don't think I had a teacher yet that really assigns busy work. Like almost all the homework is like actually meaningful to the subject you're studying, and actually it helps you like learn more about what you're studying in that class. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in there for a second, um, and I'm glad to hear those those answers because we. At the, at the school work really deliberately the faculty on talking about homework and, um, and we've done a lot of research and studies um, about the, uh, the efficacy of homework and, and, uh, and basically it should be engaging and further the learning but not be busy work so that's a, you know glad, glad to hear that <laughs> from the uh, from the mouths of the students who are doing all, all this but um, we really want to have a balanced life for our, for our students and obviously they're here for studies everyone's headed to college but at the same time you've got to have a rich you know uh, existence and life and be well balanced I interview a lot of families and students 
or at other schools where they're literally on this gerbil wheel of you know, f four APs uh, at classes and they're just literally up till two o'clock in the morning trying to cram knowledge into their head and study for a test when they're stopping playing a sport or they're, uh, frankly, they've lost some friends or they're, they're not singing anymore. So, and, the, and the parents are, are wondering, you know, is this worth it? And so are the kids. So we've, we've actually brought a few students in uh, from schools where that was the case and they seem to be happier here. I think we've got a good balance. So, any other questions around? Yes. So I love the small class sizes, but how do you deal with differentiation? So if you have kids within a certain math class or history class where you can really challenge the upper level students and provide support to students that may have deficits. Yeah, I'll turn that over to the dean here. We get in your line of sight. <laughs> so um, I've been he teaching here for 22 years and often at these events people say why? <laughs> why have you been there for so long? And probably the biggest reason is, is exactly the question that you asked about and my answer is that I really like being challenged. I really like um, working on that differentiation. So it's one of the things that we work on with our new teachers and as um, we build our skills, uh, we get better and better at differentiation. But it is an expectation of everyone who, who works here that we are going to become experts at doing exactly that, at supporting the kids who need more support and challenging the kids who uh, need to be challenged. And so in general, what we do is try and design um, assignments that hit sort of the college prep high end um, and then we will, you know, I'll give an assignment and then I'll say to say Jacob who needs to be challenged, I'll say Jacob I want you to do this, I want you to really pay attention to your sentence structure and how you construct sentences, I, I don't want to see two simple sentences in a row, stop that, right, work specifically on that and then I might say to Jenny, another student who maybe needs support, so just work on these two sentences right now, let's, let's see what you can do with them, let's get those good and then we'll move on to the next one. Now, of course, often those students might also need some support outside of classes, but those are examples of how we might do it with any given assignment in the moment, and we do that all the time, every day. I think I just want to add to say that it isn't that um, that Jenny is working toward a different expectation yeah. than John. It's, it's how, how a student gets there, right? So what we... Um, John started to talk a little bit about how the faculty of this school works together and operates and the beliefs about children and their learning that really underpin our professional work, which is an idea that we, we believe that a class with lots of different kinds of minds and brains and talents and strengths in it is a great class and it's our, it's our job to make sure that all of our students meet our very high expectations, but why would we expect them all to meet it in the same way, on the same day, same time. right? That's just an artificial schooliness that um, we're kind of the school that says, nah, to that. We know that our teachers are really experts at personalizing learning, not individualizing the standards, but personalizing the learning so that they're all gonna get there. But how? Maybe not all on Wednesday, but for sure, yes, all of them. So that's sort of like one of those central beliefs um, about Watkins. I'm gonna. I know the bell rang, so you guys have to, to head out. But um, and if if you're free, you can stay. But um, I want to let them go and thank you very much for you guys. For you know, we want to talk about. Um, I think that your last question sort of segues to who are we looking for at Watkinson and, and um, what kind of students are we looking for? And uh, the first uh, sort of piece in admissions uh, is around can, can the students do the, do the work? So it's college prep work and we have an expectation that everyone will be able to do that. So there are students that are that may um, be turned away if they if we don't feel like they can they can do the work. We don't want to set a student up for frustration or failure. Um, so there's that. And then the second piece is are you are you a good citizen? I mean citizenship is really important at our school. Um, and the respect for others and understanding differences. We have a wide range of kids here. They're from 40 different towns, lots of different backgrounds, races, religions, and we are we embrace that. I think we're maybe for even for our size of 240 one of the most diverse schools in New England um, because of interests and a wide variety uh, of, of students and backgrounds. And um, so that sets us up for um, 
you know, differences in, in the classroom, in, in our community, and to be respectful uh, and to be open to the ideas of others is, is something we're working on every day. And we're, not, we're not perfect at it, we're human beings, but we, uh, we work hard at it and we try to make a, a safe place where, where kids can feel uh, represented. Um, and so there's that. Um, and we're looking for uh, curious kids who are, who are excited about learning and maybe students are coming from a place where they don't feel like they've been understood or it's, it's ideal for them and they want more. So we have some very, or maybe they want more challenge um, because they're a little bit bored in, in their particular school. So they come here and um, we try to meet the child where they are and raise the bar on them. All right. And, uh, you know, again, with our retention last year being like an all time high, 92% of our families came back. Um, that's, that's a really strong message, I think, and we're very proud of that. Yes? Um, you talk about retention and that you have a full 8th grade, so how many seats will you have available for ninth we'll, grade? We'll add another section, right, and going into ninth grade. And um, we will, if you're in the first round of admissions, you have a, you know, a, a much better chance, and I can talk with you individually about that. You're, you're here early enough where you've got plenty of time if you want to apply for, uh, for next year to get all your materials in um, by February 1st and then we'll have the decisions made in the first round by March 10th. So I'm looking forward to touching base with my staff and, and, and I with uh, everybody here about could this be the right match for you as a student and your family and the same thing about Watkinson, we're trying to figure out if you could be a good match for us. We say uh, while Watkinson might not be the school for everyone, it could be a great school for almost anyone because of the diversity um, and you know we're not just looking for a stereotypical dominant type and some some private schools in public you know, there's a town or, or a particular school and there's kind of a dominant type sometimes you can see and uh, Watkinson we, we sort of work against that be yourself I know it sounds corny but we really want people to be uh, be themselves yeah yeah yeah. You can start that. And you all your free time. So, um, well, there's a there's there's a singing and there's also uh, can you instrumental. repeat the question? We oh yeah, about the music program. So um, there are sixth graders all the way through twelfth graders that are involved in either music classes um, or some clubs. Um, I don't know if you heard today, but there were a few students got up and talked about Brass Kickers, which is a brass group. Um, there's the Ukulele Warriors, which is a bunch of students that get together in the ukulele. Um, and then there are singing groups, so there's an upper school and middle school chorus, and then there's an upper school instrumental and um, middle school as well. So there's a bunch of different options that you can do. You sort of have to like audition to kind of find out you know, where you're best, best placed. Um, and then there are several um, students that are doing music outside, but then they're also performing here. So, and they get credit. We give them credit for that if they're going to be in the creative arts program. So, happy to talk with you further after after this. But, uh, Mr. Bernie, are you ready to talk? Oh, one, sir, more. one more question. Is there room to um, take up an instrument if you don't have experience? Yeah. Yes. yes, there is. Um, we, we're not. We don't have a, a well, the music person can't give private lessons to, to everybody, but um, there are students that have started uh, you know, an instrument and, and then found their way into to the program. Yeah. 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 Um, do you find that, I don't know if percentage or whatever, the students coming, starting at sixth grade and staying through twelfth grade. Yeah, we call do those you, our lifers. Yes, your lifers. <laughs> so do you, or do you find that there's, it's just, so many different students come at different points, or do you find like a lot of kids come at sixth? Well, at our so lifers, or? we don't have a huge sixth grade. So we, we're um, in the past couple of years we've had one section, and we get to a full section of maybe fourteen or fifteen kids. Um, most of those students have been staying with us the last, you know, and then we just keep adding. Uh, so the seventh grade might get up to twenty, and we split into two sections. Then we might go up to thirty, and we didn't lose any. We don't lose any sixth and seventh graders. So you know, now there are families that come here for middle school, and they might not tell us that on the front side, which is, is fine. And they're, and they're thinking of doing middle school, and then they're going to save their money for college or, or what have you and, and go to uh, upper school. Um, but last year, 
we only lost six out of 27 students. Um, and their schools that span our grades, six through 12, often lose a decent number of students in eighth grade because it's a, a year of change. Um, but then we'll go up to 45 in the ninth grade. So we're always looking for more students. Yeah. This year we have brought in 26 new ninth graders, uh, yeah, which was a great number, and 21 returning eighth graders. So most of the ninth grade was new. How many apply per year? So we had about 150 applicants last year, um, and we enrolled 70 new students. Now some of those students, um, I mean, we can talk about the financial piece to it because it's obviously a real factor, uh, in, you know, with the, with the uh, tuition. But um, of those 150, it may have been 100 of them were applying for aid. And we able, were able to um, have grants for the 40, top 40 of those students. Which is, we have a pretty generous financial aid budget. Um, and the school has a real commitment to, to that. But it's, um, it takes a lot of work. And we have to feel like some donors who are giving expressly for financial aid so that Watkinson can be Watkinson.